Hello, everyone. It's Don Cherry's Grapevine Podcast. Hope everyone had a great, happy Father's Day. And uh, Dad, I just wanted to say a quick uh, shout out to a friend of ours, a Renee. Good Robert. friend. Good friend. Good friend. Good friend. Uh, played for you, uh, Renee Robert. And I don't know if you knew it, Dad. That uh, do you know that Mom and I one time hurt his feelings when he came over the house one time? Oh yeah. <laughs> It was just, we didn't mean to, and you stepped right into it in saying that uh, we, mom and I voted that out of the three French Connection guys, that Rick Martin was the oh, best. Oh yeah, it was Gil Perrault, Rick Martin, and Rene Ribeiro. Rene, and mom and I thought Rick Martin was the uh, best looking out Well, he looked like Rene, sort of. Well, he did. They were all very good looking, yeah. so you had to judge who was the best looking, and it was Rick Martin. And you told him, and he said to us, "Hey, we heard. Uh, we heard that. I heard that you, uh, you. You said that I wasn't the best looking of the French Connection, and we were so mad at you for telling him that." And he meant it. Like he, he was he, really he, hurt. Yeah. He did th- and well, he, he was good looking. He was. A, or he, he is. He good is looking. a very good yeah. looking looking guy. They're all three of them were. By good the looking. way, do you know Tim and I talked that he got twenty eight goals for the Colorado Rockies in what sixty games? Sixty games. Sixty games. Twenty eight games. games. So that's about 35 goals. He'd be making about $8 million right now. Yeah, because he played with you in, in, when the Colorado. Colorado, Colorado, Colorado Rockies, Rockies, right. Yeah. And, and the one thing with that, if, if he, half of his goal posts, oh. he hit. He, he hit so many goal posts that year. And why, did, why was that, Dad? You, you know, have a theory. Well, I had a theory. I know it was right. When he used to skate around, you know, before the game and fool around and that. He used to try to ding. He, he loved to hear ding, ding, in, in ding. In practice, too, he'd do that? Well, that's what he... And, and, and in a game, I said, you know, when you get the puck, when you rifle it, you're going to, you know, you'll try to hit the post, and that's what he did. And he, I bet you he hit 30 posts that year. You know, that's not an exaggeration. N- he hit two posts a game. Yeah, at least two posts a game. <laughs> I used to tell him, quit fooling around, but he loved to hear that ding, ding, ding. But uh, he played for Buffalo and the, the French Connection and all that, and uh, they were one of the be- better lines in there. Ooh. But you had a you had a, a foolproof method on how to By che- accident. how to check the French Connection when you were coaching Boston. Well, the one game it it was it was funny. It was in Buffalo, and uh, they were really good. I think he had thirty goals and thirty four and. Uh, Rick Martin had 45 goals, and and uh, Gilly Perrault. I mean, they were really good. The French Connection line. Uh, that was a big movie back then, French Connection. So, I, I by accident I noticed that the coach for Buffalo would take them off when I'd put on Rattel line. Now, let me think. Now, it was Rattel, Sh- Bobby Schmatz. And and Marcotte, you know, I, I, on the road. I so used to they. Put, so would he put on a checking line to check? No, them? well, I don't. Yeah, but, but don't ask me why he'd take them off, and uh, so I just kept I just kept playing Rattel all the time, <laughs> and I remember Renee skating by the bench, and you know they were you know they were mad. Yeah. Tabernacle college. So I don't know what that means, <laughs> so I can say, and they were cursing and swearing. So I you know, I don't know whether he did it the next day, but. I remember you used to take off the French Connection line. Ma- imagine taking off the French Connection line. I was happy as pig in mud. Yeah. Well, remember the time in Buffalo? Was that the time that it was? Do- I think it was Donnie Marcotte and Bobby Schmatz and, and Greg, uh, Greg, Greg Shepard. Shepard were the one, two, three stars, and yeah. they, they locked arms. And you know, you know how you like a, a locomotive. They were both the same. So size. in this in Buffalo, they voted the Bruins. Well, we won about six nothing or something, and 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 they locked arms. And they skated around, uh, and everybody was throwing programs at them, and and the, uh, they used to have a lot of fun in Buffalo. Wow. I always have. That was a great rink too. Yeah. That was, oh, that was a be- uh, Did, the odd. Oh. Are you kidding? You'd hit. They were the first ones that I ever noticed that they had all the glass loose, and um, loud. Just, just the slightest hit. Look, Boom! Look, looked like it was like a big check because the glass would all go. Remember Schoenfeld and Cashman went to right through the gate. Oh, that was that. Oh, was that? Yeah, yeah. and went out the went out the gate. Where the and Zamboni? Were, they were fighting in this and and the runway and the and where the Zamboni, Zamboni came out. Yeah, where the Zamboni came out, the gate broke or they must have really hit, and they were and they both were throwing them down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> I, one quick story too. I I was like in Buffalo. They always had lots of signs. All the rinks back then in the seventies had signs. Oh, and they were yeah. great signs. And they had they had a contest, and if you were voted the best sign of the year, it was like you got money or you got season tickets or something playoffs the, something like that playoffs. so 
the best sign that year, one year, was it had a big sign, Don Cherry, John Wensink, Goon with the Wind. <laughs> what? I thought that was pretty good. It was clever. And they thought I'd be upset. I thought it was pretty good. Very clever. Yeah, and, and we had more fun. Oh, we had, used to have a lot of fun in Buffalo. Did you guys had, go to the Anchor Bar after? No, we went there once. I think, and there that's where the, uh, the wings. You Chicken know, wings started. Chicken. It was the Anchor Bar yeah, in Buffalo. They call it Buffalo Wings at one time. And the guys asked me to go. So we went in. The, they were lined up. They were lined up at the front, the anchor bar. And we went in the back door of the kitchen. And, and, and it was, it was a, a lady called Mom. They called her Mom. She was the one that thought up the chicken wings. And, she, and you know, I had a couple of chicken wings. In it. And we used to go to a place, though, in Buffalo called Pat Slater's. I think it was something like Pat. And we'd have a few beers there. And well, a few, too many, and um, this is when when I was coaching, and uh, and at the at the end of the night, he'd have Kemmelweck bread. Remember, is there a thing called Kemmelweck bread? Mm. Kemmelweck bread, and um, he'd have roast beef, and he'd have the juice. You know, oh boy, we'd have a lot of fun. I'll tell stories about Pat Slater. Yeah, I remember he was there. So. Um, just yeah. want to wish Renee, he's not feeling well. We oh, just, I know. He's, he's in, uh, in Florida. We just want to wish him all the best. He's in Florida. That's right, yeah. Oh, I didn't know he was in Florida. All those guys, Bobby Orr, all those guys are in Florida. They don't know how, what beautiful weather we're having up here right here. I want to talk about all the countries, that were the top 10, and there's more countries, but top 10. Bigfoot has uh, got us started on this. No, it was, it was Toe Save. He was a goalie, but he's called oh. Toe Save, and he, he listens in Taiwan. Taiwan? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... I'm gonna, I, top 10, Tim wrote these down. Ukraine, Denmark, United Arab Republic. I don't know what something United else. Arab Emirate. Oh, well, United Arab. Who, I wonder, um, Sweden, Japan, Mexico, Australia, England, U.S., and of course, our meat and potatoes, uh, the best country in the world, Canada. So anyhow, I just thought we'd top 10, and Big Soul got us started on that. Dad, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. It's a Canadian uh, casino and online sports book that's tailored to Canadians, which means you can use Canadian money. And if you sign up and use the promo grapes, you they'll match your deposit up to $500. You get spins on the big wheel for some big dough. Pretty good, pretty and good. And then your first sports bet, they'll bet 25 bucks. So every buddy jumping on the Montreal Canadian bandwagon, yeah. you know, you can bet 25 <laughs> bucks. So, uh Dad, what'd you think of the game Saturday? It was uh, it was a pretty crazy game. Overtime, Montreal wins. So, what'd you think of that game? Wow, well, Luke Richardson. I'm so happy they won. They were. It would look pretty bad for a while. He, uh, he's had a lot of tough luck in his life, and uh, uh, and he, I think he played 20 years in the. In played the a national. long time, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyhow, he looks. Does he ever look good? Holy, he looks smoke. like he could play. He looks right like he now. could go back playing. He's got the dark hair and didn't go gray, and looks super. Anyhow, I'm glad for Luke Richardson. I'm glad he won that game. But Tim, you know, I always, I always, and, and Cindy brought this up, that I always praise the by penalty killers. And naturally, it's Price that's doing the penalty killing. You know, nobody mentions Price, but uh, he's the guy. What, what was what was the shots? The it was, it was 30, 25 to 8 or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, they were, that Monday night, they were getting outshot. It was ridiculous. Uh, he, he just he just keeps them in the game. Anyhow, believe it or not, they've had 25 penalties, and uh, nobody has scored. That's I mean, that's hard to believe. Ten games, they, nobody has scored. And they've scored four shorthanded goals. Well, I, well they, I shouldn't say nobody scored. Uh, three, they got three goals. Well, Dad, you know, you, I know, you know, that you, you value killing a penalty just as important as the power play, don't you? I remember with the Bruins, you had, you know, four guys that was, that's all their job was, is to kill the penalties. Actually, I used to, I used to have uh, two guys, they would kill three quarters of the penalty and in the next line, next line up would get on. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's so that's yeah. how you kept the line straight. I used to, uh, yeah. And, um. You know, I don't understand the Leafs. The one thing I don't under, well, a lot of things I don't understand the Leafs. Marner, like Marner is is a good player. I mean, you know, he's, he didn't have a good playoffs, but he did, he's a good player. To say he's not a good player is ridiculous. I think he gets, I think he's got carried away a little bit in the, um, I forget what you call 
call it. Anyhow, anyhow, he kills the penalty. He takes a regular shift, and he plays the power play. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. I used to have specialists that block a shot, and we used to block a shot, killing penalties and the whole deal. And I, the only team guy, if a fight went on, the guy won the fight. I'd never say anything. The power play, we scored. We scored over 300 goals every year. I would never say anything. But when the guys would kill the penalties, I would go down and you know pat them on the back. The only guy, the only thing, yeah. So let me, uh, do, you, do you fear that you're risking a superstar killing penalties because you know he's supposed to block shots? Well, that was one of the reasons. That was one of the reasons. Well, huh? uh, the, other, the other way, I knew they wouldn't. You know, and, and that way, too, didn't you, uh, if you ran up a score, not that you ran up scores, but if you were winning big, you let those guys, too, that play the power play. You used to give them some fun, right? You know, it's a funny thing. I used to put them on, and uh, now that you say it, the other guys used to have uh, you know, bonuses for, for, you know, and I used to play these other guys, and I used to hear them say, come on, power, you know, and I played them the power play and everything, and they never, never resented those guys going on. That's how we got 20 goals scored. Anyhow. Yeah, so we were saying the Montreal-Vegas, and it's a crazy game on, on Saturday. And uh, But the one thing is you're talking about is their, their penalty killing. And let's face it, Price is a is He's the, the main penalty killer. He's the main, main penalty killer. But we have Chiron, uh, Denol, uh, Shea Weber, and, um, and Lettenden, and uh, that's how I pronounce it. And... Uh, <laughs> They've scored. They've scored four shorthanded goals. They've scored more goals shorthanded than the uh, the other team has scored on the power play. Did Did you resent when, or did you get angry when your penalty killers try to score goals and would take a chance to score no, goals? No, uh, uh, the last thirty seconds, if if you know. They, they they would try to if, if they would try to score. They goals. would try to score. You yeah. know, and you you said another thing too that p- most people don't realize with you coaching. That was probably the only time that you would pat a guy on the back because I see these coaches now and they're hugging and patting and all this. You you, you never touched the players, and the only time you touched a player to say good job uh, was a penalty knew. killer. And and you you know what really kills me is when a guy scores a goal. Guy score, guy scores a goal. If it's a real good goal, yeah, uh, and they'll put the camera on him. Naturally, put the camera on him, and they, and you see the coach got his hand on over his shoulder. And oh, do you think he's photobombing that? Oh, you know, they know they're on there TV. There is no doubt. About Did Bobby or Bruin you on that when you one time he scored a goal and and you said nice goal and he turned around and was well that was in that was in Moncton. I'll never forget that. Did I tell that story, Tim? But, but Bobby Orr... Yeah, I think we told it. It's, uh, a, fun, it's a funny story. It's a though. funny story. Yeah, it's sort tell, of relevant. Okay, I'll tell it again. You're a rookie coach. Rookie coach. I think it was my first exhibition game, to tell oh, you the truth. Oh, my goodness. Tr- yeah. First one. So, uh, you know, I don't... You really don't know how to act, Bobby Orr. <laughs> Bobby Orr. So, um, I didn't know him that well. You know, you know... You, you yeah. don't know he's Bobby that. Orr. Yeah, he's Bobby Orr. Yeah. Bobby... Yeah, you think you're Bobby... We, in the minor leagues, we used to say, you think you're Bobby Orr? Anyhow... So he was on, and he made a mistake, and the guy scored. And now when, he, and when he's on and somebody scores, he, I didn't know, leave him alone because he's just fuming. So in the next shift out, he grabs a puck, and he's, he's mad. He went through the whole team, top corner. So, you know, I, punk, rookie coach from the American Hockey League, I went down, it's a nice goal. Oh, thanks a lot, coach, thanks a lot. Holy smoke. So that might have ruined you forever. I never... Nice- He'd get a hat trick. I never said a word to him. I never, ever, ever said. <laughs> if he had to hit me between the eyes with a with a sledgehammer, but oh, that was. I never forgot that. But, Anyhow, but I, you know the one thing that that you it was funny was watching the game last week just before the playoffs, uh, before the Montreal Vegas series. I said Vegas really hits. And Montreal, they hit, but they don't hit like Vegas, and, and they didn't hit like you know that Colorado Vegas series. And I said so. It was, is Montreal going to hit or is Colorado going to go lighten up? And you said, basically, the teams that hit, if they play a team that doesn't hit, they won't hit as much, right? That's what you said. Well, they'll have to play them the first game. Right. So the first game, Vegas came out and really hit, and they, yeah. hammered, Mont- they hammered Montreal. But you could see the second game, they just didn't quite hit as much. Montreal won. 
And then that game at Saturday night, they didn't hit, except for McNabb, oh. where he corked, a, he corked a Suzuki. Suzuki. Did uh, I got admit, Suzuki got up and, but, you know, and Shea Weber started a fight with him. Yeah, well, I, I think, think he it was, was a suey. It was, I think he was a little mad because it was a bit of a suicide pass. So. Well, they call him sueys. It, it was sort of a, a suicide pass. And I knew I knew Weber would go over and start something because yeah, so, he was ticked off that so, he gave the pass. So that was a pretty good hit. Well, that was that would that would have opened Rock'em Sock'em if we if we did another <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em. So people that don't know what a suicide pass is, it's a pass that's just a little bit behind the guy. And he guy turns. He's got to turn to look back, and the other guy's coming, and and that's exact. That, and you should be, and if you're a defenseman, you should be smart enough not to give a guy a suicide pass. That's why I think Weber was a little bit yeah, mad. Yeah, he was. So. You know, the whole thing, I'm sure everybody saw it on thing, you know, poor uh, Flurry. I mean, you feel bad for him coughing up. No, that. let me tell you what happened on that. I don't, I know he's just getting ripped uh, on TV and paper and everything. But what happened is it hit something on the boards because he's done that a hundred times. He's, he's not stupid and he knows the game. He knows how important it is. And what happened was it was coming around and it hit something on the boards. It come out and hit a skate. Because he was waiting for the puck. Yeah, it did take a funny bounce. It, did, it took a funny bounce off the boards, hit a skate, and went out in front. It was the Foley, I think it was. Uh, was it? Anderson. Got Anderson, it. yeah. I can't tell those guys. They look alike. Both good hockey players. Both from GTHL. Or, no, Anderson wasn't, but both uh, played for London Knights. Yeah. Anderson. Yeah, you know, they learned how to play hockey if you're playing for Dale Hunter. Anyhow, the puck came out in front, and he put it in. And, you know, everybody, but that, it hit something. It hit something on the board because he was standing waiting for it. And as it come in, it hit something on the board, come out, hit a skate. Boy, (laughs) if he'd ever missed that one. And he would just skate. It just happened. He was skating in front. What are the odds that he would be skating in front? I wonder if the ghosts from the old Montreal Forum have eventually found their way to the Bell Center. I don't know. (laughs) That was, that was unbelievable. But I, I, I we go, go going to talk about the, the uh, some of the winners that that uh, in the NHL, Tim, and I'd like to I I, I want I, I have a reason for, for for saying this one if you don't mind. Well, it's my show. Why not? So you want to talk about the NHL awards? Yeah. yeah. And Jacob Slavin, is that how you pronounce the names? I believe so. Yep. Yeah, and um, he uh, he won the best defenseman. He no no he won the Lady Bing. Excuse me. He won the Lady Bing. Not, and how can a how can a how can a defenseman win the Lady Bing? I mean, I how how do you play defense a per, a perfect defense? Now, he's a pretty good defenseman, I guess. But I mean, how do you win the Lady? I don't mind a forward, Ricky Middleton on my club, John uh, Rattel, John Rattel, and uh, Johnny Busick. So I didn't mind, but um, I told did I tell a story about Rattel? Yeah, I, I told it last week. I yeah. went. Oh, last week. Okay, so how can but how can a defenseman think about it? How, how does it's defense, almost like an oxymoron? Like yeah, you just think how? There's, okay, the reason I'm saying this is I have to say this. Um, how many years ago? A long years ago, when I hurt my shoulder playing baseball like a fool, and I sh- and they told me not to play baseball, and I played baseball, and I hurt my shoulder, and I separated my shoulder. Well, I want I shouldn't have gone to camp. That's what I shouldn't have done. But I wanted to make the Bruins so bad. Boston Bruins and everything, and I go there, and it's not healed. The, believe it or not, it's still bleeding, and it was there was a wire in there. Someday I'll go through the whole thing, and I couldn't shoot the puck, but you know I was, I bullshit my way. I remember I would uh, I would wake up in the morning and be blood all over my pillow and the whole deal. So I ne- I never forgot a guy named Bill Quackenbush. Now he won the Lady Bing. He was a defenseman too. Beli- that, that's hard to believe. Now, I know Especially you, back then. Yeah, I mean, it was tough hockey back then, and, and he won it. And, he, you know, you win the lady big, you're supposed to be a meh, 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 you know, sky. That's what I think. And he was like a he, – he won the lady big. And I remember him saying to the coach, uh, Milt Schmidt, uh, and he turned – and I, I couldn't shoot it. I was just – well, I could shoot, but it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a shot. And he, he said – Hey, Milt, he said, this guy's got a worse shot than me. And, I, and you know, I've had a lot of cruel things said to me. I've uh, I had Eddie Shore. <laughs> you don't get any cruel. I had Patty, and I had a lot of guys 
cruel things said to me, but I never, ever forgot that. And every time I hear of a defenseman winning the, the Lady Bing, I think of Bill Quackenbush. And to me, he's the, one of the cruelest guys I've ever met. So, Dad, last night, it was again, this is Sunday morning, Saturday night, that was some game with the Islanders and uh, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, uh, or I think they were asleep for two periods. Yeah, that, that was something. But, uh, you know, one of, there was a, you, you know, and you're one of your favorites got the winner, Matt Martin. Matt Martin, and, and got, got you the know, winner. I'm not going to knock the Leafs, but they let him go for nothing, and they let that Korverlev go. And uh, well, he's the guy, as you say, he's the guy that kills the penalties, right? He's, he, and he kills all the penalties. Blocks of shots, and you hate to say it, he's... If he's he goes Davey da- Forbes. If, it, if he goes down, he goes down, you know? Like that's, yeah, and if he gets hurt, well... It, Are you saying a pers- a player can be no, and the, You're not saying that. And I'll bet you, you talk to uh, Barry Trotz, he thinks the world of uh, Korvalev, but if he goes down, he goes down. Yeah. It's not like a thing. Yeah. So, and, and your favorite, Clutterbuck, he did... Uh, oh, he well, did, yeah. He did very well. <laughs> Holy sm- I remember him. Uh, can I tell you the story about you and him uh, going at it at... Uh, it was a GTHL... Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was a GTHL golf tournament, and uh, you had said something about him. Uh, when during- he played for Minnesota. He yeah. played for Minnesota. Yeah, tell us what you said right, about well, him and why. Okay. I saw a game, and he had a visor on, and he was fighting a guy without a visor. And I, you know, I back in those days, everybody wear a visor now, but back in those days, it a few selective. guys wear but tough guys don't wear a visor. So... And then he took off. He took off his helmet and the visor. No, I'm just after the fight. He took after off. the fight. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. So I go on television. I'm just ripping him to shreds. And I, I have to admit, I ripped him to shreds. And um, and as the team is watching in Vancouver. It's like it's uh, delayed. Delayed. Yeah. yeah. And 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 they're all sitting around. I think it was Vancouver. Anyhow, anyhow, it had to be Vancouver because it was late. So. And the whole team is watching uh, Coach's Corner, as he usually did. And uh, I, I really r- ripped him. About it. And at the end, I said, and they, he says, I, said I, don't, I don't know what his name is, Buttercup or something. Oh, well, <laughs> the whole team fell to the floor laughing. And from then on, everybody called him Buttercup. That's right. Like Clutterbuck. Hey, that's right. Clutterbutt, so, Buttercup. Buttercup. Anyhow. So, so go ahead, you pick so, it up well, from then, there. Well, fast forward, then, then it's the summer, right? And was it that summer? It was that summer, and we're at the GTHL golf tournament that we, you always used to go to. Celebrities are there. And we're sort of up top on the patio and all this. And from the distance, I can see this hockey. This, you can always tell hockey players. I was away. watching Michael Landsberg interview. He was like the celebrities that were at the Yeah, tournament. he was yeah, all he, a celebrity. As they came yeah. in. But there was I, this guy. I was way the, up and high. Yeah, and yeah. there was this guy in the distance. You could tell he was a hockey player with the way. But he was walking with the mission. <laughs> and I said, oh. I, wonder I what saw this him is out of the corner of my eye, too. And I kept staring down at Michael. Yeah, Landsberg. yeah. So anyway, he, he goes past the interviewer guy. And he comes up. And he wants to talk to you. And, and, and all. So I was listening because I pretended I was doing something. No, I'll I pick knew, it up from there. I, I knew there's something was going to happen. And what, ha- what was the conversation? He How did said, it go? He said, uh, hello, Don. Uh, my name is Cal. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd, Cal. Is Cal Cutterbuck. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, boy. I something. Is I didn't appreciate what you said about me and everything. I said, well, look, did you fight a guy with a, with a visor and you, and you took is, yeah, yeah, I did. I, but did you, you don't mention about the time. The next time you fought, you took your helmet off and your visor off and you fought a guy. No, that's true. And dude. then you praised him. And I praised him. Yeah. And, you know, that he did a good job. And he's, well, that's, so then we sort of became friends. And he told me the story. He says, you know, for the whole year, I was called Buttercup <laughs> from the whole year. And, and now... He leads the well. I don't know if he did last year, but the year before he, he led the league in hits. And um, well, that whole line is Zizekas, Clutterbuck, and and Martin. Holy! They call that the fourth line. Every time they have the puck, they're in Tampa's end. And they yeah, can't and get out. I'll tell you, boy, that is a great line. And Martin got the winner last night, and uh, it's going to be a dogfight from here on in. Mm. 
Well, Tim, you know, I know you and Dad probably missed uh, this past season going out and scouting the kids and everything. And uh, and I know they did have an OHL draft this year, but but how could they do it without really going out and seeing the kids? And so, are they going to do anything to compensate that? Yeah. And, and Matt Martin, he was one. He was a walk on. He wasn't drafted. And I sort of were talking about Matt Martin, but. Tell us about the OHL. Well, I think what, like the draft, they had a draft this year because you, yeah. you kind of have to have the draft. Right. And I think a lot of it was that, you know, that the scouts and the GMs talked to, you know, coaches from the kids year before and everything like that and tried to, you know, do their best on seeing who was going on. And then you saw an awful lot of kids. It was kind of sad. You saw an awful lot of kids, you know, doing videos and then of them skating and remember, lifting Remember you did the pot to, and a kid, a kid, uh, Asked the very first question was yeah we did a podcast and and the kid was uh, was like 15 years old he says what do I do like he says I want to go to the OHL but what do I do and so and you saw a lot of kids send them videos and stuff like that but I, I think what's good, like what happens is they have the draft so it's 2005 I think was the year they drafted so now these next kids are they're going to go to the next level and there's going to there's a draft next year for the same age group and normally. That year, the the OHL, the, the scouts kind of look at that year, that you know, that the, when they the, the next year, and they want to look for goalies because goalies are tough. They want to see the goalies if they if they you know if they grow and if they if they get better. But I think this year, they're really going to scout the like they would be midgets the, the 2005 because they want to see who they missed, right? Because right. you and I, Dad, we've seen kids at the beginning of the year. You think yeah. are first rounders. And by the end of the season, you go, oh, and you see some kids you didn't even notice at the beginning of the season. Yeah. And by the end, they may be one of the best players. So they, they move up and down. So that's going to be, it's a real crapshoot. So, and for all the parents and the kids that are listening that are disappointed they didn't get drafted, I mean, again, you know, go out next year because you're going to be scouted a lot more than yep. you would be. And there was a lot of walk-ons, like Matt Martin we talked about. He, as you said, Dad, he was a walk-on. He, he, Sorelli? He, and he walked on Sarnia, and look, he's in the thing. And then Anthony Sorelli, uh, who plays for Tampa, and yeah. he's one of their better players. Uh, DJ Smith, who coached Oshawa, now he's in Ottawa, he had him a walk-on. Yeah. And they won the Memorial Cup, and he scored the game-winning overtime goal for the Memorial Cup. So, you know, for all the kids, I know there's a lot of kids devastated this year because they don't know what, what's going to happen. But the scouts are really going to look – normally they don't look like after your draft year, they don't look too much after it, but this year they really will. They'll really be scouting it heavy because you don't know, right? You don't know what kids are going to go up and what kids are going to go down. You know, I, the, the fun I have after I stopped coaching, uh, well, hockey night in Canada was a lot of fun coaches corner, but the fun I had in life was going out and seeing McDavid when he played Bantam and uh, seeing all those, well, I mentioned McDavid, I get mentioned about 10 of them, Marner and all those guys when they're minor midget and that was a fun of my life I used to I used to go out and see those kids before anybody else <laughs>